What's going on, Wolfpack Nation? Thank you so much for tuning in with us today. We got a special guest here, Chance Shepard, man. Chance, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. But before we get going with the interview, want to take a quick second. Please make sure, again, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button for us. It really helps support us in the channel. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Check out our other great content and follow us at Tuffy Talk Now on Twitter or Instagram. So, Chance, first of all, just like we've always done with every one of our people that we've interviewed, we always just like kind of start off with, you know, what what are you up to these days? What's going on with you? How's life? You know, what's, what's been going on with you these days? Everything's good. Everything's good. I got uh, since leaving state, I got two little boys now uh, mm-hmm. married, just awesome. working pretty much every day. So coaching a little bit of baseball, but trying to raise these two boys, really. OK, so I want to kind of first off with kind of, you know, your family history. So obviously with the family history with with state is pretty lengthy, starting off, obviously, with your brother, Shane Shepard, who played uh, from 2015 and 2018. And then your father actually mm-hmm. played under former uh, baseball coach Ray Tanner's first two teams, uh, 1988, 1989. So growing yep. up, did I mean, did your dad's history with NC State have a lot to do with with you ending up at NC State? Yeah. Yeah. That's the only place I wanted to go from, from the get go. So, um, yeah, I grew up just watching them every Saturday, playing football, went to baseball games during baseball season. Not a huge basketball guy, but I mean, I'll support anything that, that we're playing in. Coming out of, coming out of NC state, you got signed by the uh, Washington nationals in 2016 and uh, to a minor league contract and, uh, you play for the GCL nationals. So, what was the experience like playing for the GCL? I mean, you know, obviously, you know, everybody's got to start somewhere. It's obviously very rare, if if not almost unheard of, that you jump right to the majors. So, I mean, you know, hey, you got to start somewhere. So what was that experience like and kind of what was your attitude heading, heading into it? I mean, I was super excited going from not being drafted. I thought it would be, but – and it is what it is. But getting a chance to go play and, and follow the dream playing professional baseball and got to play with one of the – best hitters in the game right now, Juan Soto and a couple other guys that are still playing in the big leagues and made a ton of friends. So it's, I had a great time doing it. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Did you get to see, was Trey, well, Trey obviously Trey was there. Did you get overlap with him in spring training or anything? Yeah, we talked a couple of times, uh, try to stay away from the big leaguers as much as you can, but yeah, Trey, Trey came up to me a few times and we had a couple of conversations, but he's an awesome dude. He's a, uh, happy for him to go to Dodgers, get a chance to go win another world series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you think about him getting picked with that trade? what you think about that one? I couldn't believe it. I, did I read right that he said that uh, something about coming back to the East coast after he's done, he doesn't want to live out West. Did I read that right? I didn't see that one. Um, really I could be wrong. Maybe that's he did something my dad told me, but yeah, I, that's, that's incredible. Uh, don't, don't know where yeah. he's going to play. So Corey Seager's out there, but I mean, that's two really good shortstops. Yeah, someone said they thought he's probably might play second. That's what somebody said. Um, he played third his first year at state. He can pretty much play anywhere. So yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but for you when you were at state, so again, you know, obviously I tra- that that trade was crazy, and that can be a whole other conversation. But yeah, the when you were at state, one of the things you were kind of known for, at least people had impression on you, was that you could crush a ball. So twenty four home runs in like your, your career. You had fifteen your senior season. I got that stat right now. Yeah. With like, and you played all over the field. You played, I think, outfielder. You played catcher some. Mm-hmm. Um, what, like, did you? Was that by choice, or was that something that was recommended to you by the staff? It was literally wherever they wanted to play me. I mean, if if they wanted to just DH me, like I did my senior year, catch whenever I could, play some mm-hmm. outfield. As long as I, I'm one of those nine guys on the lineup, I'm okay with playing anywhere or hitting anywhere. So. And uh, when you get to be a senior, it doesn't really matter where you play as long as you're on the field trying to help your guys win. Yeah, That's kind of what my mindset was. And we stinking gave it a good run the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in 2018, the uh, you end up playing uh, for uh, the Auburn minor league team and uh, they mm-hmm. got released. Um, and so now you have family. So, you know, one of the things I did want to ask, you know, you said that you're still coaching a little bit of baseball. So, but I mean, you know, what do you kind of see in terms of your, your future with baseball? I mean, do you see yourself just, uh, you know, maybe helping at all with, with being a, a, a part-time or full-time baseball coach, or just me being more of the, maybe, maybe the future son, uh, baseball coach. Yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of, I've been talking to my wife about that really. I don't know if I'll be able to just, I don't know if I'll be able to coach my, my son because I don't want to be the, the 
overbearing dad who's yelling and screaming all the time. And mm-hmm. I, I know that that competitive part will come out of me if I do coach. So I'd kind of rather just be on the sidelines, but yeah, I do coach I've, for the last three or four years. I've coached high school baseball as an assistant in Wilmington. Nice. And uh, I, I would love to get into college coaching, but right now with these two boys, I got my hands full. So, and yeah. can't, uh, can't leave my wife to do it on her own. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, did when you were at NC State, did you ever have that conversation with Coach Avent at all of you know <clears throat> as a student coach or helping as a coach or anything like that? Yeah. Uh, actually, as, as soon as my senior season ended, he kind of looked at me and said, "Hey, go play your couple years of pro ball and come back here and coach with me." So I haven't made that phone call yet, but it's probably not too far away. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, I love I love Coach Avent. I don't. Don't know how much longer he's got, but I hope he goes forever. Honestly. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you this kind of off question: like, What do you think his legacy is going to be from your perspective? Wow, it's a good question. I mean, his legacy. He's a. I'd, I'd love to see him win one, win a national championship, win a big ACC championship. But he, to me, he's a winner. He'll do whatever it takes to win. He'll push yeah. his guys hard as hard as he, he needs to to win. Um, he has. He's just change so much from team to team to team he knows how to push buttons with guys he knows who he can push this hard who he needs to kind of lay off of a little bit and who can handle the getting the pinch hit in the ninth inning or getting pulled out of a game early um to me he knows how to handle people as well as he knows how to coach the game Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and then do one thing too which i wanted to kind of ask about you know during your time in the minors so i mean you know, obviously you spent a couple of years. And so one of the biggest things, again, I mean, making already mentioned it, obviously power was not an issue that you had, but I mean, you know, and then obviously yeah. versatility where you played, you know, you played catcher, you played outfield, you played first base, you, you again, you played all over the field. So I did want to kind of ask, I mean, you know, what kind of, uh, I guess, traits of, of your game were you looking most to improve during your time in the minors <laughs> or, you know, like, you know, what were you focusing on? So I didn't, I didn't play a ton of defense at NC State. My whenever I did get to hit, I played a. That was, so that was main my main goal going into pro ball was to figure out where I was going to play and really get good at it. And just didn't have quite enough time to get as good as I wanted to be. But yeah, and obviously cut down on strikeout numbers. But yeah. power comes with, and strikeouts kind of go together. But uh, yeah, a lot of it was defense for me. It, it was just being able to lock down a certain spot and get get where I felt comfortable there every day. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. And then, you know, looking at, at your time at state, uh, you know, for me, especially one moment that stands out to me and probably for most state fans, uh, even though it unfortunately didn't end up in a win was uh, when you guys p- played in the 2016 ACC tournament against Miami and uh, it was the, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was the bottom of the eighth and in, in the five, five, score in the bottom of the eighth one oh count man on first and you hit a no doubter 419 foot home run that over the left field which was i mean just oh like i i was there on, on the third baseline and i mean when when right from the moment it came off the bat just the whole stadium erupted and then you know you you obviously walked off with the swagger and uh yeah i mean <laughs> unfortunately it didn't end with the win but i mean you know for me I felt like that that was a huge moment for you. So I wanted to kind of ask you in terms of where you maybe felt that moment, uh, you know, stands in terms of your favorite moments at NC State. And then are there some that maybe stand out to you besides that moment? Yeah, stinking Michael Angeli ruined that one for, ruined that one for me from Miami. Gosh, he threw the bat 20 feet in the air. No, that was – I mean, that's up there. The only thing I'd put ahead of it, it would not even for me, is when Preston hit the inside of Parker the year before against Miami, the Little League home run. That's my – still gives me chills every time I watch it. We're at home plate before the before Collins even drops the baseball. It was – that was the best moment at, at State. And then I guess the home run against TCU would be up there. Yeah. But um, that one was – I love playing Durham. I love the ACC atmosphere. I wish it would go back there, honestly. Before we continue, I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor, Flatlands Dress-Up Insurance Group, that has our whole world covered, with agents in five offices throughout eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need, offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial, crop, health, life, and employee benefits. 
They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Flatlands Dresser protects the things you love so you can spend less time wearing and more time enjoying them. Find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Dressup. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsdressup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. I do got to ask you, though, and maybe Rob, maybe you can kind of chime in being, you know, a former baseball player yourself as well. Miami, when he hit off that home run to end up, unfortunately, beating us in 2016. So, I mean, did you, I mean, you kind of mentioned how he threw, I think, that bat up 20 feet in the air. Uh, I mean, yeah. do you feel like that was excessive? Or, I mean, do you think that was, you know, hey, he hit a, he hit a no-doubter, so it's kind of, it's the name of the game kind of deal. Because I know that Kisner, he actually cut him off, cut the guy off as he was heading to home plate and he kind of, you know, kind of had a few words, choice words for him. So I wanted to kind of get y'all's opinion on that. So in the moment, we've all been there. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like you said, I, I kind of swagged mine out a little bit coming out of the box and maybe it wasn't in retaliation to what I did. But, I mean, yeah, you're mad when you're on the other team. But if you're on Miami there, that's pretty awesome. That's a moment they'll remember forever. True. True. Yeah, well, and because I mean, you got guys in the big leagues doing it now too, like Tatis oh, yeah. and those kind of guys. It's awesome to watch. Just stinks when you're on the right team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just That's don't right. don't let it happen. It won't happen. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, no, it's he gave him the opportunity. Yeah, <laughs> it's as simple as that. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, it, it's it's one of those things. Cause, I mean, especially with uh, with NC State, you know, like this year in the College World Series, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But uh, you know, kind of looking at. Terrell Tatum's, you know, bad flip, you know, that's, that's one that I'm sure even maybe a lot of Andy people are a little bit pissed off at, but I mean, by golly, man, he crushed that ball. So what are you going to yeah. say really? Um, so, you know, kind of wanted to kind of ask you a little bit. I know we already talked a little bit about uh, uh, coach Avon. So I wanted to kind of ask your, your thought on necessarily, first of all, we kind of talked a little bit about his legacy, but how much would you say, because I'm sure you kept up with this season. Am I correct? I mean, there's, I can't oh, imagine yeah. you not keeping up the college. But yeah. So, I mean, kind of looking at how he handled the COVID situation, how he handled the Vandy Pac 13 game, how he handled, you know, starting off with a less than stellar record and then coming back and going hot and finishing off as strong as he did. Um, you know, because, you know, a lot of state fans, including myself, if for, for a little, for a little while, looked at that, that he's been in six ACC championship games and hasn't won a single one of them and goes, oh, that's just the one place I really would wish that he could get one in. But I mean, you know, what would you say in terms of this season, how much this really built on his legacy in terms of his time at NC state? Man, it's an, it's incredible. I mean, we're, as long as I've been around it, we've been a second half team. I mean, it's yeah, this year we didn't really quite have as much time. It was a little short in season, if I'm not wrong. And, uh, got off to a real slow start. And I went to the game at UNCW because obviously I'm in, living in Wilmington. He didn't make any excuses. He just said, we're not really playing good baseball right now. Got to get a couple things right. And He got his lineup out there and nine guys in what, four arms, five arms, and just ran through the rest of the rest of the way. I, I don't think there's, I mean, he's not an excuses kind of guy. He's not going to make them. You can give them to him all day in there. He's not going to make any excuses. And you could tell by the way the team rallied around him there at the end with the Pack 13 stuff and the COVID and just really a group of guys who loved looked like they loved playing with each other and and would run through a wall for each other. Honestly, the one the one the one thing I could just add to that about Avent's legacy is, I mean, I was back in nine, ten, and eleven playing, and you were in this what 15, 16, 14, 13, 14, 15, 16, right? Yep. Those four, um, yep. Now, like with this microscope, how social media is, how ESPN was, how we were at the College World Series. Avent's been like that since I was there, since before that. So, like, we've known mm-hmm. the man, the coach he is. So, I mean, yeah, it's not what we wanted in Omaha. Um, but 2013, you saw it, but there wasn't as much of a spotlight on us, I would say, because we were right. – what did we go? Uh, one and two, I think. We won, lost a game, won a game, lost a game. Um, so, to be on this national spotlight and people to learn who Elliot is as a person, as a coach, really shows what he's been for the 25-plus years he's been at NC State. But all his players know who he is, so we know that that's the uh, that's the same old Elliot. That's not that wasn't for TV. So um, I think his legacy is something that, that can't be reproduced. Yeah, it's it's hard to talk about his legacy unless you really played played for him or have been around it closely. Because yep, you might not get it in wins and losses, but you'll the way that he the person that he is is kind of what is more of a 
important deal to me, honestly. Yeah. You know, for me watching it over over the years, you can just tell how the players have really gravitated towards him. And it's like they'll run through a brick wall for him. I mean, anything that guy would ask for, you do what you would do in a heartbeat. And for what you're saying, that sounds like just like it. I'm just you know, I'm 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 gonna be curious about how many more how many years he's got left him. I feel like he probably could do another twenty if he really wanted to, with like much energy he's got and fire as he has. But man, I, I you know, I'm that's pretty cool hearing you say that, Chance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it's it's I mean don't get me wrong. There's disagreements with players and coaches all the time, but you know, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, he's got your back whenever you walk out there. And if he writes your name on that on that card, he has uh, obviously he's got respect for you. And he trusts you to get you get the job done, whatever your job is that day. Yep, yep. Well, and and obviously part of his legacy, you see, you always got. I mean, part of his legacy is always going to be his famous spin move against Coastal Carolina. I mean, that's. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be up there forever and ever. I mean, like if there's a way to cast iron it and make it a statue outside of Doak Field, somehow a his spin move, they should make it happen. That's for sure. That, that should be that should be oh, probably, that should be a high priority on yeah. the upgrades list. Two two umps and L eight with his back turned, looking at the other yeah. umps like he's about to head back. That'd be something <laughs> yes. like that. Would be awesome. Yeah. How would you say it was? I mean, you know, obviously with with you having the opportunity to play with Shane. Um, you know, obviously that was, I'm sure a a very cool moment, probably a moment that, I mean, you guys probably talked about for a long time. Is there anything at all that you would, that you didn't get the chance to achieve that, or something you weren't able to do that you kind of, you know, look back on and, you know, maybe think, man, you know, I wish I would have been able to do this. Well, yeah. I mean, of course, everybody would love to go play in the big leagues. Everybody would love to be an all ACC kind of guy, but it's just, it's not in the cards for everybody. The one thing that I wish I did that I didn't do was I wish I would have hit 19 home runs my senior year because my dad hit 18. And uh, he <laughs> still runs his mouth about it constantly. Uh, it, uh, yeah, so I I finished with 15 to his 18. and But, no, playing with Shane was incredible. Um, we, after high school, we talked about we'd probably never play together again because he wasn't a big NC State guy. He was – he kind of floated around. He – cheered for pretty much whoever uh state was playing because he wanted to get under me and my dad's skin but he, we ended up my freshman year he ended up coming up to raleigh and hanging out for a little while and it was the next weekend he was committed so it, he fell in love with it pretty quick once he got up there and just kind of fell in love with the group and i love playing with him and no as far as regrets just eight, just 19 stinking home runs i wish i did four more yeah i love that i love That's that awesome. beautiful well, well thank you so much chance for 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 hanging with us again please make sure if you guys are watching right now make sure to tune in on thursday and as we have part two of our conversation here with chance where we kind of dive a little bit more into doke and the college world series talking about this season so make sure to tune in for them and uh definitely thank you so much again for tuning in for this episode and we'll see you on thursday and as always go back <laughs> <laughs>